reaction to this was maybe similar to the reaction to getting run rule back in February in California? Oh, I think the reaction to this was, uh, was different. Yeah, different. I think, you know, in California, it's early in the season. Um, we're still trying to figure things out. We're playing people in different positions. We haven't really settled into a lineup yet. Um, and this was different because this was really just us not paying attention to details and making sure that uh, our mindset was right and our, you know, our mental and physical preparation was where it needed to be. What adjustments do you need to Carly and Malik in order to kind of get back to the dominant self where she struggled a little bit in Starkville? Well, I think what's, you know, a little different for Carlin this year is um, last year she was kind of one of three. And this year with her starting on a lot of Friday nights, people are really gearing for Carlin. And, I mean, Mississippi State, I think, is a good example of that. They, were, they really weren't prepared for Peyton. And, you know, but they put a lot of time and effort into preparing for Carlin. So it's understanding that, but then not using that as an excuse, which she never does. Um, realizing you have different things to go to and you have to adjust your game as you go based on what the other team is doing. Given the, the roles that the Car Carlin and Peyton have, I mean, they're, they're, they've got so many meanings. Do you have to do special things to sort of safeguard their well-being, for <laughs> lack of a better way of putting it? Um, I think we're kind of blessed that we have two. A lot of staffs have one who they're really going to be going to at critical moments. And then, you know, maybe two or three others that are picking up innings here and there. Um, but, yeah, we did sit down and talk to them a couple weeks ago about, okay, this next eight weeks, you know, what are the all the things that each of you can be doing um, from a sleep standpoint, a nutrition standpoint, a hydration standpoint, you know, everything in order to make sure that you have the stamina that you want to have when we get into postseason play. Do they get that, you know, that they maybe have to make some adjustments along those lines because they are carrying such heavy workloads? Absolutely. And, and I think they were both um, really excited about the prospect of, okay, let's just, you know, and it, it's not major things. It's not like you're going to gain 10 pounds of muscle in the next two weeks, and that's not what we need. It's just uh, not letting anything slip. You know, I mean, the simplest thing of drinking enough water. I mean, hydration is an athlete's best friend, but, you know, just them understanding how important it is that they pay attention to every little thing. And uh, they were they were excited about, you know, the idea of kind of having a specific plan for each of them. What are your thoughts on the changes on the social media? Oh, uh, I, I'm really proud that, you know, they decided that on their own. I mean, as a coach, you try to introduce things to them and get them thinking about things. And that's something we do each year as we watch The Social Dilemma in January. And what's interesting to watch is that, you know, there's some people in that room who've seen it now three and four times. And each time it makes a, a deeper and deeper impact. And so for them to come up with that on their own, and then I, I got to hand it to Charlie Orsini because I gave her the job of, all right, if we're going to do this, we have to have a way to track it and hold people accountable. And she hasn't missed a beat. She's sending out their little spreadsheet every week and, and everybody's responding. And, you know, I mean, I asked them one question, do you draw energy from social media? And they were like, heck no. And I said, okay, then do we really want to spend 25, 30 hours a week on it? <laughs> so I think it just made them look at things in a different way. Um, but I'm proud of them for taking the action and then holding themselves and each other to a different standard. Zeta said it helped make everyone closer because they're not automatically reaching for their phones and they're all talking all the time. Just how have you seen maybe the chemistry benefit from this or the impact of you know actually limiting it like this this year? Well, it, it's interesting you say that because it, it was at the time that we had the program come in and did two days of you know pretty intense, grueling leadership and team building. And they learned through that exercise that in times of adversity, they need to turn to their left and right and rely on their teammates to get through things together. So it was about the same time, you know, and I, I really asked two questions. Where do you draw energy? And they said, my teammates. Okay, just, do you draw energy from social media? No. Well, if we're not on social media as much, maybe we'll be spending more time with our teammates and developing deeper connections and deeper relationships because those are the people we need to go to um, when things get tough. So, um, yeah, I mean, I, I think we've definitely seen that and, and they speak to it much more clearly than I can because they're the ones living it. And last year, you guys talked so much about how this is a player-led team. It definitely is the same feeling this year. Do you feel like this was an example of a way they maybe took that to another level of being a player-led team? 
Absolutely, because a lot of teams can say, oh, they want to do something, and that sounds like a great idea, but it takes people within that locker room to actually put it into action and then hold themselves and each other accountable. And that's when really cool things happen, when they're willing to do that. Sharon, the challenges to this weekend's opponent? You know, LSU is a veteran team like us. In so many respects, we're, we're really similar. Um, they have a, a great sophomore pitcher in Sydney Brazon. She and Carlin came in the league the same time. Um, they, they have a pretty versatile and deep pitching staff, uh, transferring Kelly Lynch, who's doing some really good things for them. Um, they're, they're a dominantly left-handed lineup, which will be a different look. We haven't seen anybody that, you know, is going to start seven, eight left-handed hitters in their lineup. So that's going to be a little bit different, but, I mean, we've got some lefties that, that we have in, in our locker room, too, that we can work against. Um, but they're very experienced, and, you know, this time of year, everybody's just fighting, fighting like heck for, you know, their spot in the conference standings, fighting for, you know, postseason seating, and LSU is one of those teams that, Played a really good schedule out the gate, got off to a great start. So they put themselves in a good position for a top eight, uh, certainly a top 16 seed, but they're fighting for a top eight. So there'll be a lot on the line here. Terry, can, can you look at Carolyn and what she's doing this year and see some benefits from what she experienced last year with freshmen? She went through some things a little bit last year. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Well, first of all, Carlin is one of the most honest, self-aware, and growth-minded athletes I've ever coached. And for somebody to be as talented as she is and still be willing to um, be open to different ideas, to try different things, um, not let her ego get in the way. I mean, it's, it's absolutely refreshing to coach her. Um, so, you know, with you take an athlete like that, um, they're going to improve. But she really bought into not just relying on her fastball. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we spent most of the fall throwing her changeup a ton, her rise ball a ton, so that she became more confident in those things. Mm -hmm. um, as a coach, again, you can suggest something to an athlete, and a lot of times they're going to do it, but maybe they don't have the buy-in inside. She's got the buy-in um, because she's so willing to, um, you know, focus on growth and not results. And, even after this weekend, she and I talked yesterday, and you know she had two or three things that um, she really learned from this weekend. And there's never any excuses with her. It's just all about what I learned and how can I apply that to my game to get better. We have time for one more. You guys are in position, you know, to eventually, you know, put yourself in position to contend for the regular season title. Mm -hmm. Just has it been something you have to talk about with the team since you did it last year, like not comparing or not putting that pressure to we have to win it again? Or have they been pretty mm -hmm. good about kind of not really getting into that already? You know, we talked back in the fall right away about not trying to, you know, be last year's team or compare ourselves. We have so many returners from last year's team, it's kind of hard not to do that. But I think this team has done a good job of letting their identity develop as the season goes along. You know, when you look at where we are now to last year, we're in roughly the same place, you know, going into these last three weeks. And to me, it's all about how do you take all that noise about, hey, you could do this and turn it into a benefit for you um, and, and attack that challenge, um, view the pressure as a privilege, and let's just go after it and whatever happens, happens. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Thank you. All right.